in this dark and dreary winter, what could be more charming than mushroom stays or a mushroom corset? So what inspired this is I bought a mushroom growing kit from a local farm, well, upstate New York farm, and I got that started about a month ago. And since I also had this fabric, I decided that growing mushrooms and creating a mushroom themed corset would be a cute companion project. So I got started with the kit, sterilizing everything, giving it a space to grow in the kitchen. These are blue oyster mushrooms that I am growing and I had to sterilize the bag too. There are some larger commercial companies that make such bags, but I thought it was cool to get one grown within a couple hours of where I live. So, you know, support local farms, support small business. And I got it started. Basically everything you need, the growing medium and the mycelium are in the bag. You just have to keep it wet and keep going. So while that was growing, I started on my mushroom corset. I started with this sort of pair of corduroy stays I made in 2021 uh, because I like how they fit me, but I wanted to make some changes to the shape. So as you can see, um, I'm kind of miming how I want the other pair. The corduroy stays are sort of based on a late 18th century style of stays, but I wanted to go with something a little more 16th, early 17th century. So I traced the basic pattern pieces and started making some adjustments to them. So the front needs to dip down a lot lower and it needs to come up a little bit more curved up to my waistline. I also decided I wanted to shorten the straps a little bit because the straps on my corduroy one are a tad long. So I wanted to take those up a bit as well. And once I settled on my pattern, which will be available as scans for my patrons on my Patreon page if you're interested, uh, I trace it onto the fabric, mirror images of all the pieces except the back, which is going to be one solid piece. I'm not going to have any back lacing. I don't have a lady's mane. So I started cutting out the interior and exterior patterns. Right here, uh, I cut my hand. I leaned too far into my roller, so please be safe. Then it was time to start with the boning. Boning can kind of be complicated, but you basically want to put bones wherever you want extra support to help keep the fabric straight and help give you support to your bust or waist or back. So I'm using leftover bits of industrial cable ties that I used on previous corset projects. I didn't buy any new ones for this. So I tried to sort of uh, figure out where I could fit the sizes I currently have so it wouldn't be wasteful. And I was pretty successful. Once you mark out all your boning channels, you're gonna sandwich your fashion fabric and your lining fabric together. You can have another layer of lining. You can also sew in separate boning channels, but I kept this pretty simple. So I'm just pinning the two layers of fabric together so they don't slip and slide around when I take it to the machine. And yes, you can do all this by hand. Um, it'll just hurt your hands. So I stitch along the boning channels, making sure to leave a little bit of an allowance so that the cable ties can move in the bone channel easily. Um, you don't want to make them too tight or they start to kind of twist on their side. For the boning, you want to sand off the edges where you cut it because they tend to be quite sharp. And especially if you're not doing a bunch of different layers, they can start to gradually poke through the fabric um, and either show on the outside or start stabbing you like in a kidney or something, which is pretty unpleasant. So I wouldn't recommend it. So what I do like about corset making is that it involves other skills other than just hand stitching or machine sewing, you kind of get to work with other tools that aren't as obvious in the sewing room. Um, and I think that's really fun. So sandpaper is just 
one of those little extras, a little, little surprise. Then I started using the little eyelet cutter that came with my grommet kit to just cut out a perfect little fabric circle where I would set my grommet. And yes, I am hammering with a wrench because I can't find where my husband put the hammer. Um, they didn't all come away cleanly, so sometimes I had to cut off just the edge of it just so the whole circle would come out. And that's exactly where my grommets are going to go. So there are some very nice professional grommet setters that are almost like a little hole punching kit and it just presses everything perfectly for you, but I don't have one and one's not currently in the budget. So I have this manual kit and a block of wood. <laughs> uh, the first couple times I did it, I did not even have the block of wood and I don't recommend that. I would say I did level up some of my corset making stuff with uh, marking exactly where the bones go and having this wood block. Those were my big improvements for this project. But things were going too smoothly, of course. Something had to go wrong. So things have gone wrong. We're at that part of the process. Um, let's start with the mushrooms. So as you can see, I've got a new little cluster of oyster mushrooms here, but um, the edges are getting really hard and dry, actually. And I've had very little movement in the rest of the bag. Um, so I think, I think the issue is not the mushroom so much, but by the time they get, so by the time these mushrooms are starting to get big enough to cut, they're super hard on the edges. like hard. So I think the issue is um, our house because, well, I thought it would be nice to grow mushrooms indoors over the winter since I can't really do much gardening uh, in this climate zone. But I think the problem is that our house over the winter is incredibly dry. Um, like I noticed in my own skin, I have to do like slugging overnight with like Vaseline and stuff or else my skin is like peeling off. I'm putting on a lot more hand cream, a lot more body lotion. Um, but also it's not that warm. So it's dry from the indoor heating, but the indoor heating isn't that effective um, because it's an old drafty house with a very inefficient system. So it's actually still quite chilly in here. I'd say around 60 degrees. So it's a little bit too cold and a little bit too dry, I think, for these guys to thrive. Um, so I'm going to do my best to keep them alive. I'm trying to water them three times a day instead of the recommended two to replenish that moisture. I might cut these off since they're so hard and keep going. The mycelium still looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, I was hoping I'd have a little basket full of mushrooms by the time I finished these stays. Um, and I have had one, and it was a delight, but yeah. As we've gotten into some colder days, we are having some problems with the mushrooms. Actually, I might, I might give this a couple more weeks. I've moved it to this room because this room gets a lot of sun in the afternoon. You can see we're kind of at peak sun right now. Um, so it's usually a degree or two warmer um, than the kitchen where I had it previously. So I'm gonna give it a couple weeks, see if we can turn it around with three times a day watering and a slightly warmer room. Um, if not, I'm gonna put it outside to overwinter and try and get a crop from it in spring. So when I tried my stays on, um, I noticed two things. Now, first of all, these aren't meant to be like a very shaping garment. They're more just for a little structure and, you know, panache. So the outer layer of fabric is pretty thin. It's just a thin quilting cotton. 
So it itself does not give any reinforcement. A lot of the structure comes from the cotton twill on the inner lining. Um, now obviously if you have two or more layers of strong fabric, you're gonna get more possibility for like compression and shaping. Um, but what I did notice about this is maybe because it is sort of a softer, thinner fabric, I am noticing a little more wrinkling along the sides. So what I want to do is actually put in like one more bone on the sort of side piece to go under the armpit because that's where I'm noticing some wrinkling. Um, I'm also noticing it's a little bit too big, even though I based it off of another pair of stays I have. Um, it's a little bit looser than I want. It meets very easily in the front, um, which I want a little bit of a lacing gap. That's just my preference stylistically. Um, so I'm actually going to pop off these side seams before I put the boning in and take in maybe like a half inch on each side just to give it a little more squish. Um, the other thing I noticed, so I finally used the eyelet cutter that came with my grommet kit and I was like, yeah, this is going to be so good. So you would think that the cutter that comes with the grommet kit would be the perfect size for that grommet, right? Um, as I was trying it on, lacing it up for the first time, uh, one of the grommets just popped right the heck out. So obviously since the metal is laminated on itself now, I can't reuse this one. But the question is, if this is a little bit too big of a hole, can I put in others? And I'm also testing some of these other ones also, like this one's a little loose. Um, so the ones that are super loose, I'm thinking of stitching over with an eyelet stitch um, and then trying to put a grommet over that, then maybe that'll make it a little bit thicker. We'll see. Fortunately, I knew what to do, at least for the corset. So we're getting back on track. I took out the side seams because that's where I have sort of the most ease where I could take it in a little bit. So first I just had to open all that up, which was unfortunate because I overstitched it. Uh, and then I also had to figure out where I wanted my new boning channels, just to add extra structure on the underarm area. Then I had a stitch on the binding. Now you can do this by machine. I chose to do it by hand because it's just a little bit fiddly. It's quite narrow. It's a quarter inch um, bias binding tape. So I also did one side at a time, which means I basically had to sew it all on twice. So I just very gently sort of whip stitched it against the lining layer and then against the outer layer. So the idea is that it won't really show through, you're not stitching through. And I have done the stitching through method before, usually with a wider binding. It's just easier to sort of miss it or have edges come up. It does take a really long time, so I recommend um, sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor, it's better for your back, and putting on, you know, a K-drama just to keep you entertained because it's a very repetitive. It's not necessarily stitching you have to pay super close attention to. And if it's winter and it's cold, um, by all means, make yourself a little goblin in a big blanket. That's how it works for me. Then I forgot I still needed to do the straps. So I stitched them over inside out first. Once I stitched it wrong sides together, I um, had some fortifying matcha and then I flipped it the right side out. Now, normally you can finish the straps um, by just putting some binding around the edges of that too, but I was just a little bit short on binding. I always forget how much binding um, corsets and stays take. So I flipped it the right side out and then I pinned it again to help keep it flat. You can also press it at this stage, which is probably more effective. Uh, and then I just overstitched it again just to make sure it's nice and flat and smooth and doesn't get that kind of like puffiness that in things that are flipped and set out do. I also took a moment to fix my mushrooms. Um, so I took off that sort of dried out growth on them and I'm thinking I'm going to make some sort of little tent to put over it, especially overnight to help keep it from drying out too much. So hopefully we can get a proper harvest from this soon, but until then, uh, we live in hope. 
and now it's time for you to enjoy the final product so I really love the shape of this one I think it's nice it has that elegant elongating shape it doesn't wrinkle anymore now that I added that extra boning but because the waist kind of curves up a little higher I have a wonderful range of movement as you can see I just can't stop demonstrating how easy it is to move around in this thing but it gives me a nice amount of back support which makes it easier for me to just like have good posture and sit upright which is something I do struggle with sometimes and it causes a lot of neck pain to be honest so I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out I think it's really cute and fun and whimsical I love the subtle mushroom pattern that you can't really see from super far away but up close it's like oh my gosh it's a bunch of adorable mushrooms and hopefully I will have a basket full of homegrown mushrooms soon too Special thanks to my patrons who make the magic possible. If you want to join them, the link's below. Bye!